joined by one of those very leaders. We're going on the record with Congressman Richie Torres. So, Congressman, good to see you. Welcome back to the show. It's always a pleasure to be here. So, Congressman, let's begin with a big headline. You've been very vocal on your disagreement with the leaked draft opinion from Supreme Court Justice Sam Alito. We saw the Senate last week reject a vote on codifying Roe v. Wade, right? So what comes next? What's the plan for Congress moving forward? Well, for one thing, we have to prevent the Republicans from assuming power uh, because the situation could get much worse. But the reversal of Roe, uh, if it were to happen, would represent one of the most dangerous and disgraceful decisions uh, in the history of the United States. Uh, instead of respecting a precedent that has been affirmed and reaffirmed for a half a century, the Supreme Court has chosen to dismantle for what is million for millions of women a fundamental constitutional right. Yeah. Um, if abortion, if if Roe were to be immediately overturned. Um, 13 states, in 13 states, abortion would become illegal, and it could become illegal ultimately in, in as many as half of the states. Right. Uh, so it's a dangerous situation. So, so what's your message then to New Yorkers, New Yorkers who are understandably troubled by the potential ruling, specifically women who want to stay in control of their own health care decisions? We have to ensure that the right political party is in power because the reversal of Roe would have implications far beyond Roe versus Wade. Yeah. Uh, if the federal government can strip you of control over your own body, if it can strip you of your privacy, then there's no limit to government intrusion. Right. Uh, the government would deny you the right to marry your partner or the right to sexual intimacy with your partner mm -hmm. or the right to raise your children as you see fit. But right? all of these are part of our privacy, which is now under siege. Yeah. And, and, you know, elections do matter, and I will talk to you about elections in a second, but I want to get to another big topic affecting so many Americans, Congressman, and that's inflation. It is real. Both New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, they're, they're seeing record high gas prices this week. One station in New York I saw just the other day on Twitter had over $5.50 for a regular gallon. That's wild. Now, President Biden did address this, Congressman, but people are looking for real relief, and they're saying it's just not happening quick enough. So what can be done and done quickly? Well, as you know, the Federal Reserve has been raising interest rates uh, in the hopes of bringing down inflation. It fell marginally uh, in the month of April, but it's far from sufficient. But we have to pursue policies that lower costs. Yeah. Um, in the House, we passed a bill that would cap the cost of insulin at uh, $35 a month, mm -hmm. which is a game changer for families who are struggling with the cost of prescription drugs. Uh, we need to restore the child tax credit. The child tax credit would benefit the families most affected by inflation. And research has shown that the most common uses of child tax credit payments were food, utilities, yeah. and housing, which are the sectors hardest hit by inflation. So let me jump in here, because Americans, sometimes you need bipartisan support to get things done, right? So do you think Republicans, and this goes to your election point, do you think Republicans are hoping the current economy and inflation could become their main talking point in the upcoming elections? Look, Republicans are looking to exploit the suffering of Americans to uh, acquire power in the midterms. But we have a fighting chance of retaining the majority in the House. Uh, and I suspect, you know, if we make progress toward bringing down inflation mm -hmm. and with the reversal of Roe and the prospect of the Republicans imposing a national abortion ban, I think all of those factors could potentially galvanize the Democratic base and enable us to retain the majority in November. And, but it's going to be a complicated path ahead. Yeah, and speaking of elections, Congressman, there are some very big races here in New York that we are closely following. Are, are you endorsing any of the three candidates on the Democratic side in the race for governor of New York? Uh, I did endorse Governor Hope. Uh, so I'm, I'm fully supportive of the governor. I believe that she's governing the state effectively, and she deserves... Um, to be reelected, and she's a historic candidate, the first female governor of New York. Yeah, and, and you know, and there's a lot of talk right now about um, her and her seat for lieutenant governor Antonio Delgado, which will create a vacant seat in Congress. What do Democrats need to do to maintain that seat in New York? Look, we have to find a candidate who, who can win. Um, you know, obviously, the appointment of Antonio Delgado as, as lieutenant governor, uh, it's a huge loss for the House Democratic Caucus, but it's a, a huge win for the state of New York. Yeah. He's an exceptional public servant. But I'm confident that the DCCC will find a candidate who has a fighting chance of keeping that seat in Democratic hands 
And lastly, Congressman, I do want to talk about another deadly fire in the Bronx last week. One person died on the same block as the Twin Parks fire, which killed 17 people. Now, you pushed to get the Empowering the U.S. Fire Administration Act done, which just passed. So what does that do? Kind of help us understand it all. So the House passed one of my fire safety bills inspired by the tragedy of Twin Parks Northwest, uh, which left a death count of 17 Bronx sites, including as many as uh, nine children. Uh, the, the bill I passed empowers the United States Fire Administration mm -hmm. to investigate fires uh, so that we can learn lessons, translate those lessons learned into actual policies and practices that will prevent fires and save lives. Uh, because presently, the United States Fire Administration has no legal authority mm -hmm. to conduct on-site investigations into the deadliest fires in the country. So that's a void that my legislation fills. Well, that you know, and that seems like it was a no-brainer. It's surprising that it didn't exist before that. So uh, thank you for your, your work on getting that done. We're out of time, but Congressman Torres, always good to talk to you. We covered a lot of topics, and we'll talk to you soon, okay? Always a pleasure. Take